Hello and thank you for tuning in. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about sketch dimensioning and how to constrain sketches. So what we'll cover in this video is sketch dimensions, so that's angular dimensions, circular diameters, um, radiuses, also defining sketches and parts, the, the part or sketch origin. So first of all let's go ahead and open up SolidWorks and we want to come over here, we want to click new part okay so now we've got the new part set ready to go so in the link in the description you'll find there's a well there's a link for a download of this PDF and what we've done is we've gone and created some dimensional drawings just for you to practice with so if you just go through these get yourself familiar with doing it um, until you, you think you're confident enough that you, you can just carry on without it so what we'll do is we'll do this top one first and uh, we can see that it's got a dotted line through here so that is a center line we can see that the dimension has been dimensioned about center for these two lines also from this point here we've got a dimension for this height as well as from there to the top so we can see that this line the center of this line must be the origin for this part so we can see that it's 80 by 80 that's 15 this is 15 and this will also be 15 so let's go to SOLIDWORKS now we're going to be using the keyboard shortcuts that we created in the previous video so if you haven't seen that video click pause open up a new tab find that previous video uh, and just watch it and add them keyboard shortcuts so what we're going to do is we're going to hit S so we create a new sketch we're going to select the front pane then we're going to select L L of the keyboard shortcut L for the line and we've got this uh, little pencil showing us that we've got the line selected here so I'm going to create a line click once click again with the sketch relation of horizontal next I'm going to click that line I'm going to click the point here which is the origin at the minute you can see I can just move this about anywhere it's basically just in, sp in nowhere just space so if we click that line click this point which is the origin point come over to the sketch relations and click midpoint now we can see if we click here it can only go outwards like that and also that line is black which means that that line is now constrained so <clears throat> what we'll do now is we'll create a basic outline of that part but doing it with these sketch relations so we've got the horizontal one there you can see on the right hand side of the pencil so we'll go there and basically draw this upside down T. Okay, so we can see all these lines. We've got sketch relations of horizontal and vertical. The next thing I'm going to do is create a center line or construction line in the center of the bottom line and the top line. So what we'll do is type hold shift and type L on the keyboard, which gives us the center line command. I'm going to click the point of origin which is the center of this line and then I'm going to come up highlight this top line and we can see the yellow box appeared there that is the midpoint of that line so we'll click there as well and we can see we can still move all this about um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select that center line and give it a sketch relation of vertical so now this can only go up and down you can see that that is fixed to the center of that line now so next thing we'll do is we'll hit D on the keyboard which is dimension we'll select this line here drag it out we know that's 15 so I'm going to type 15 and there we go so like we've seen in that uh, drawing these lines here were all the same size so what I'll do is I'll select all these lines so click that top one first control hold control down click this one again keeping control down click that line come over to the add relations we'll hit this one here which is called equal so now those lines are equal to each other so D on the keyboard to get the dimension of again I'm going to click this bottom line drag it down click type 80 enter and then we're going to click this bottom line click this top one 
drag that off to the side and we're going to type 80 enter again and now you can see that this sketch is fully defined there's no blue dots or blue lines it's all black which means it's fully defined so that was a pretty simple one so let's go and do it do one that's a, a bit harder have a look um, let's do this one down the bottom here okay we can see that uh, this dimension here this dimension and that one are all coming off this corner point so that is suggesting to me that that is its point of origin the dimensions coming up to this dotted line this dotted cross basically means that that's the center point of this circle we can see that this circle or radius here there's no center point anywhere else so that must be the same center point as this circle and the same with these two here so we can see the dimension for the larger circle is well the smaller circle is 25 and that is the diameter signal symbol and we can see that the larger one is 40 and we've got the dimension of 50 uh, along vertical or the center of them too. Along this side we've got the smaller circle of 15, uh, the larger circle of 30 and then we've got this bottom dimension across here to the center of these two again which is 84. So what we'll do is we'll go back into the sketch into SolidWorks. <clears throat> we'll hit C on the keyboard for circle. I'm just going to draw a circle over here, draw another one and I'm going to draw from the center of that circle another and from the center of that circle another one. So I'll click the dimension tool or hit D on the keyboard and I'm going to click the origin and I'm going to come over to the center of this circle and pull that down. There's a, a little trick, you see how that's like the line's gone off center there. If I bring it over here you can see it's bringing this dimension to the right. If I bring it down it's bringing it to the bottom. But also you can see next to my arrow there's like a little symbol of the mouse uh, the right hand the, yeah the right hand um, button is grayed out followed by a symbol underneath like a lock if I click that now that mouse button on the right hand side you can see the locks change but now if I bring that over here or over here it won't move from that position if I click it again it's going to unlock it and I can bring it over here so if I click right again now it won't let me bring it down here so that's just a handy thing to remember when it comes to dimensioning quite detailed drawings it can get a bit messy so we'll drag that down here we know this dimension was 84 we'll select the, center, the origin midpoint of that circle drag it off to the right and we know that that was 50 okay the outside diameter this the circle on the outside we know was a measurement of 40 millimeters so if we bring that up here type 40 and the inside one was 25 so we'll say 25 and you can see these are dimensioned differently but you can still keep it the same like that you either drag it off to one corner above other side however you want to do it really so we'll click off here we know that one was 15 and we know the outside one was 30 so we've got the basic um, starting points of this dimensional drawing. This line here we can see connects onto this so that must be a tangent line to that. The same with this and the same with this outside one. So what I'm going to do is go back in. I'm going to hit L on the keyboard for line. I'm going to draw I'm going to just draw a line from here now out to here. Hit escape and then another tip for you. If you hit enter on your keyboard and you've got this simple the normal arrow in your workspace if you hit enter it's going to repeat the last command which was line so now we can do that line again escape so the standard mouse keyboard uh, cursor enter it's going to bring the line key up again so we'll just drag a line down there so what we'll do is we'll select this outer circle select this line by holding control and clicking that line select tangent and we're going to do the same with this one here so select there, control, click this line, and tangent again. Now we can see that these are tangent to these lines. So let's click this one. Hold control down, click the outer circle again, and tangent, and we'll repeat that for this top one.
Okay, so now we can see that these lines are tangent to the edges of them circles. So what we'll do now is we'll trim that back. So if we hit T on the keyboard, click off around here somewhere, somewhere near where the line is, and you can see a little grey line appearing. If we drag that over that line, it's going to cut that line back to its where it's basically touching another line or another sketch entity. So we'll repeat that for the remaining lines. So now we've got the outside of that part all sketched out. And now we can see these inside lines, have got, they've all got a radius typical of 3. So that means all these radiuses are all 3, three millimeters. It also says here 10 typical, which means the space between the outer one and the inside is going to be 10 millimeters. And we've got a 33 degree angle here for this line here. So what we will do first of all we'll just draw some lines on the inside there uh, then we will well, we'll come back and have a look after so L on the keyboard I'm going to draw a line from here to there escape enter to repeat the last command I'm going to keep that with a sketch relation of horizontal as you can see the yellow box near the pencil I'm going to do the same for vertical and then I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard I'm now going to hit D for dimension. I'm going to click this line and this one, bring it down here. I think it was 15. Was it 15 or 10? 10. So that one's wrong. So I can double click that dimension to bring it up again and alter that to 10. Do the same for this line. You can also drag, click and hold and drag these if they, they come out, as well as these little arrows. If you click on it, you can see we've got these two outer dots. If you click on that, it's going to bring the arrows to the inside of the line. So next what we're going to do is we're going to make this line parallel with this line. So I'm going to click that line, hold control, click the out line, and click parallel. So now what we'll do, bring the trim key command up or hit T on the keyboard. Trim these lines back like so. And then I'm going to go back, hit D on my keyboard for dimension, and I'm going to dimension this at 10 again. So now we can see them lines are all fully defined and constrained. So now what we can do, hit escape, hit T for trim, and I'm just going to trim these outer joining parts that we don't need. Okay, that's them gone. So let's go back to that uh, drawing. Right, we can see that these were radius of 3 degrees on all of these joining corners. So what we'll do is we'll come up here to where it says sketch fillet, click that. I'm going to click here, I'm going to type three millimeter fillet, click back in this blue box, and then I'm going to click each point. You can either do it by the point like that, or you can select that bottom line and the next adjoining line, but it's quicker to click points like that. So once we've selected them all, I'm going to click tick, and that's it, that's that sketch, 2D sketch finished. That's uh, overcrowded then, it's a bit odd. But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, in the next video, I uh, will be talking about uh, mirroring sketches, linear arrays and circular arrays. So we're going to go in a bit more detail. Um, but yeah, just work your way through that PDF. Get familiar with dimensioning and how it all works, um, as well as your sketch relations and drawing lines and circles until you get confident with it. Yeah, thank you for watching.